Meteorologist Ted Beener. He's on the phone with us uh, from the National Weather Service in Seattle. And Ted, you were just kind of briefing me kind of where were you and what was your role uh, 36 years ago on May 18th? Well, good afternoon, Tracy. On that fateful Sunday morning, I was working the aviation forecast desk uh, here in Seattle. And at that time, we were a state forecast office, so I handled all of the aviation uh, air terminal forecasts as well as the route forecast for the entire state of Washington. It was a very quiet Sunday morning, much like uh, the start of, of that Sunday on Pearl Harbor uh, back in 1941. Very sunny day, and at about 8.33 in the morning, the red phone. You remember those red phones from you know the, the old Cold War era? We had one of those on the aviation desk, and they don't ring. But to that morning, it did ring, and it was the flight service station at Boeing Field. And the specialist there patched me through to the pilot of a three-hour cruise. He had five passengers on board, and they happened to have been flying on the south side of the mountain when it went. And, boy, I can tell you the five passengers were describing some very colorful language while the pilot, excited but yet calm, was mm -hmm. heading to, now heading towards Portland. Their aircraft, in an instant, turned from, you know, parallel to the ground to perpendicular to the ground. It felt like somebody opened a very hot pizza oven. They were hit by rocks, lightning shooting out of the plume, lots of turbulence. They, it was a really scary uh, item for him. The pilot turned the aircraft towards Portland, and all he wanted to know was, how do I get back to home, which was Chehalis, Washington, uh, probably about uh, 40 or 50 miles north of Mount St. Helens along Interstate 5 towards Olympia and Seattle. And I yeah. indicated to him at that point that the plume was going to be heading to the east-northeast uh, towards eastern Washington and beyond, that he would be okay to turn and head west and then back north to get back to Chehalis and life was good. But at that point, after hanging up that, I turned to my lead forecaster, Paul Gary, and said, well, the mountain had blown, and we already had a plan in place. We'd been working with the USGS since the start of the year uh, when the mountain started grumbling, had a, had a rough tummy in it. And, uh, you know, with, back then we had the green zone, the yellow zone, and the red zone. We were doing twice daily uh, plume trajectory forecasts uh, for the mountain in case it went uh, so that particular Sunday morning, I updated that forecast just a tad and then contacted the Air Route Traffic Control Center down in Auburn, Washington, who handles the airspace for much of the Pacific Northwest, told them the mountain had gone. Meanwhile, Paul Gary was putting out the flash flood warning we had already done and put together for the Toodle River. Mm -hmm. And uh, then it, my responsibility at that point was to update all the aviation forecasts for eastern Washington, whether it was for the air terminals themselves or for the routes between them, uh, to, to indicate the, that we were going to have volcanic ash in just a few hours. Wow. Well, you know, Ted, it sounds like your story from that day, you know, very memorable. And we really appreciate you being here with us. You know, you play a very important role, especially, you know, getting those uh, the pilot and his crewmates uh, on the ground safely. So, Ted, thank you so much for chatting with us about your experience from that day 36 years ago. You're welcome.